Two years ago this month, I bought the Garmin Fenix 7X. I've done a few videos about this amazing watch, but now I've hit my two year anniversary. I think it might be time for a celebration. In this video, I wanna share my eight favorite tips and tricks. There might be nine that will help you get the most from your Phoenix 7X, including the pro versions that are current right now. I'll include how I've set it up, how I use it, what still annoys me, and what tips, tricks, and shortcuts I've found. The Phoenix 7 range is still current with the pro versions that were launched in mid-23. They were kind of like a mid-cycle refresh update rather than a completely new watch. Garmin updated the HR sensor, added EKG capability, improved the visibility of the display, apparently, and brought the flashlight feature, multiband GNSS, and larger storage to all versions of Phoenix 7 Pro. Most main features are still the same. The design, the size range, the display is identical, in my opinion, and so is the battery life. So for existing owners of the Phoenix 7, there's no real need to suddenly worry that what we have is obsolete, or will start to slow down, be unsupported in the coming year, or will lose its value. Generally, those things don't apply to Garmin watches. You ask anyone who's got a Garmin 945, 955, Phoenix 5, Phoenix 6, these are all still very capable watches that are not slowing down and are just as capable today as the day when they were first bought. Now, a few months ago when Apple launched Watch OS X for the Apple Watch Ultra, I was starting to go down a path that went something like this. I can see what Apple's gonna do with the Apple Watch Ultra in the next couple of years. Expand the number of sports, metrics, and sensors it can work with, increase the battery life, get global athletes to be seen using Apple Watch Ultra on a regular basis, and so on. Now, when it comes to looking at how Garmin can take their fight to Apple, there isn't much more they can materially do to impress us with their battery life. It's already insane. They could improve the display, but that just means using AMOLED display from the Epix Pro instead and they can't really compete with the scale, variety, and consistency of the Apple ecosystem. So I was starting to see that I could see what Apple could do to get closer to Garmin, but I can't really see what Garmin could do to defend themselves against Apple or even take customers away from Apple. When I see an Apple Watch, I still think of Starbucks, social media, perhaps scrolling through some selfies, maybe take an EKG once a year, because that's what you need to do. Maybe sign up for a yoga class, have a carrot smoothie at a local juice bar. I can't explain it. That's just how I feel about the Apple Watch. On the other hand, I look at my Phoenix and I'm instantly motivated. It clearly says if my training is productive, maintaining, peaking, unproductive, or the worst insult, detraining. That drives me. This watch is not dancing around the issue trying to be polite, hold a group chat, and do everything to avoid offending me. No, it's telling me, look, loser, you're not training effectively. Get off your butt, get out there and go for a run. I like that. Maybe it's marketing, maybe it's social positioning. That's fine. I like my Phoenix watch. I love how it communicates with me. And I actually like how it makes me feel. So bring it on. So now we've got all that out of the way, let's look at some of the things I've set up on my Phoenix. Here are my top seven or eight, it might be nine now, tips and tricks for the Phoenix 7 watch. Number one, setting up the hotkeys. Hotkeys are Garmin speak for shortcuts. There's lots and lots of options here. You can set a whole number of shortcuts on your watch for things that you're using regularly. I don't use all of them, partly because I can't remember some of those combinations of button pushes. So I've set up a number of shortcuts, which are really just the ones that I use regularly. Firstly, how do you do this? Well, you go into the menu by holding the menu button, and then you scroll up to system. You can also scroll down, but it's quicker to scroll up in this case. Scroll down then to hotkeys and press select. This is gonna bring up your current set hotkeys, and some of these are set by default. If you want to change one of them, just select it and then scroll through the list and select the one you want. So I set three of the single button hold ones for the main things that I use. So if I hold the start button, that locks or unlocks my watch. If I hold the down button and keep holding it, that will activate my broadcast HR screen. Holding the back button, that brings me back to the watch face from whatever screen I'm on anywhere in the watch. My Phoenix 7X, which is the original one, has a flashlight set as default to two presses of the light button. I believe for the new Pro smaller sizes, which also have that flashlight, it's set up the same way. When it comes to the two button hotkeys, I've set them up like this. If I press and hold start and up, I get Amazon Music. If I hold start and down, I get Garmin Pay. Now, broadcasting HR enables you to take the optical HR sensor on your watch and transmit that data through Bluetooth or AN Plus to other devices. 
I use that a lot when I'm working out indoors. If I'm on my treadmill, I use Zwift on my phone and I will then broadcast HR to my phone. When I'm using Zwift with my Wahoo Kickerbyte trainer, I'm actually running Zwift on a Microsoft Surface Pro 3. It's a pretty old device. This will transmit data through Bluetooth to that machine. I can also broadcast the HR data to my Garmin Edge 1040 bike head unit. Now that really, okay, it's another Garmin unit, but it means I have all the metrics for my cycling outside captured on one device in real time. So it's much easier then to sync that to Training Peaks and to Strava and to anything else that I want to sync it to. Tip number three, I call Face Palm. You can actually Face Palm the Phoenix Watch and that will take you back to the home screen. Let me show you how. There's a little bit of practice needed and it needs a full screen cover and an assertive palm. And it doesn't work from every single screen. So if I'm on the heart rate broadcast screen, for example, you can't actually use it to go back to the home screen. But if you're scrolling through menus and settings and you just wanna rather than go back up through them all, just go back to the home screen or the watch face, palm your watch like that and it will take you straight back to the home screen, the, the watch face. Also, if you have got the light on and you wanna turn the light off, just palm the watch, that's it, and it turns it off, no buttons to push. Tip number four is the Garmin morning report. Each day when I wake up, the first thing I do is not look at my YouTube stats, it's actually look at my watch and look at the morning report. It gives me clear data about the night I just had and the day still to come. I can see my sleep pattern. I can see my overall sleep score overnight. I can see the weather, the temperature, my training readiness, my schedule for the day ahead. And then always there's some cheesy but cheerful comment like, be your best today. Yeah, okay, maybe I don't need that. Some people dismiss this, but I like it and I genuinely look forward to it first thing in the morning. I see a strong correlation between how I feel in the morning and how good my sleep was according to my watch. It will appear from about one hour before your set wake up time to about one hour after. Now you can edit what's in the morning report and you can also deactivate it if you don't like it. You hold down the menu, you scroll down to appearances and then select morning report and then you can toggle it on and off and edit what's included. Now, one thing I found annoying is, particularly at the weekends, sometimes I might not wake up within an hour of my normal wake up time, and then there was no morning report. It disappears until the following day, but I found there is a way to show it again whenever you want. It's hidden, bizarrely, in a secret developer menu on the Phoenix watches. So starting from the watch face, hold menu, select system, and then about, and then press the light button eight times. This is gonna bring up the developer menu. Now be careful as some of these options can reset your watch, reinstall the software, or even erase some parameters. So do be careful what you select here. But if you go right to the bottom of the list, you'll see push morning report. Hit that, come back out of it, and again, you will then see the morning report right there. Now honestly, why it's hidden there, I really have no clue. And I'm hoping it will find its way onto a much more usable menu. But for the moment, that's where it is. Tip number five. Garmin Pay. Garmin Pay is a contactless payment system just like Apple Pay, except you don't need your phone. If you see that contactless payment symbol, which these days is pretty much in any store and at any gas pump, you can usually use Garmin Pay and use it directly from your Phoenix watch. Now you do need to set it up with your bank, debit or credit card, which you do in the Garmin Connect app on your cell phone. I use Garmin Pay frequently. There are two examples of when I use it the most. Firstly, if I'm out on a long run, I don't need to stress about carrying a bank card in case I need any extra hydration or nutrition or just a snack bar. The other one is I don't need to pull out my wallet and a bank card at a gas pump anymore. I can just bring a Garmin Pay on my Phoenix, hold it to the contactless card reader at the gas pump, and I'm good to go. Now, if it's the first time that day, or if I took my Phoenix off my wrist since I last used it, I might be asked to enter a four digit pin that I've set on the watch but otherwise it doesn't require any additional steps at all. Number six, rapid strap changes. I have done a number of videos on this topic, particularly shorts, and you may have seen some of them already. I make full use of the ability to switch out watch bands in a matter of seconds. These days I get all my straps from a company called Ancool who are on Amazon. I'll put a link below. They're generally between 10 and 14 bucks each. They're cheap enough that I have a number of them and I tend to switch them out depending on my mood, what I'm doing, maybe what I'm wearing. Ancool also does some nylon bands, but I like the silicone bands. They're easy to keep clean even when you're running and cycling every day and breaking into a sweat. I just find them easier to keep clean than a nylon strap. Right now, I'm sporting a white strap, which doesn't really go with anything. Well, I guess maybe it does go with this outfit a bit, with a black underside to it, which then shows through in accents here on the strap. I imagine anyone who sees me doesn't notice the strap whatsoever, but I like it and I feel good about it. Tip number seven is the flashlight. Now, when I got my Phoenix, it was only available on the X size. That's the largest size of the Phoenix 7. I use it every single day, literally every single day, 
and every night. If I need to check something in a corner, two pushes of the light button and there's my flashlight. Taking the trash out at night, avoiding the cat while heading to the bathroom at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm, I'm using it every single day. Now, I believe that that flashlight feature has been a bigger success than Garmin imagined because now they've put on every single model in the Phoenix 7 range and the same for the Epix Pro, Taxix 7 and Enduro. Now, there are other benefits to that flashlight as well. You can set it as I have done, that if you are running after dusk, and it will know what dusk is because of course it's a watch, then it will automatically start flashing on your wrist as well. So you've actually got a light on you when you're out running at night. Now, if you think you're never gonna use a flashlight or you're not gonna use one that frequently, so you don't need to keep it on you, just have a think about every single time you reach for your phone to illuminate something. Now, imagine having a flashlight that's even more accessible than pulling your phone out, easier to direct the light and way brighter. That's a flashlight on a Garmin watch. So is there anything that bugs me or annoys me after two years with the Phoenix 7X? One, and there's only one thing that actually bugs me in any way at all. And that is the fact that it's, I love the style of it, but it's clearly a stylish watch rather than a purely functional watch. The forerunners are clearly function over style. Get the job done, awesome watches, and they don't weigh a thing really. You just don't even notice you're wearing them. This has got some weight to it and it's got some bulk to it, uh, which is really driven by the style of it. But because of that, and particularly because of the thickness of the watch, the center of gravity, center of gravity of a watch, bear with me here. The center of gravity is not right up against my wrist. So when I'm running, it will move around on my wrist unless I've pulled it in really tightly with the strap, which is what I have to do when I go out running. And I just have to remember to do that when I go out running. I tend to wear this very loose. I wear it quite loose like I would wear a normal watch because I wear this watch 24 seven. I wear it at night, I wear it during the day. I take it off to shower and I take it off to charge it, which is like once every two weeks, the battery charging, not the showering. So my Phoenix 7X is now two years old. Am I gonna upgrade to a Phoenix 7X Pro? No, what for? I mean, the updates in my view are too minor. I'm happy with the screen and there isn't really that much difference. The HR sensor on the Phoenix 7X is fine as well. I don't think there's any reason to upgrade. Yes, it's a more capable sensor and yes, it has an EKG on it. But when I have access to EKG devices, I use them a few times for the novelty factor and then I'll go back to using them once or twice a year. So I don't really need to have it on my wrist. If I had a smaller Phoenix 7 and could now replace it with a pro version that had the flashlight, Maybe that would be more worthwhile and worth upgrading, but even then I think it's unlikely. I think I would just wait until I upgraded the watch to the next one because I'm pretty sure Garmin is gonna keep the flashlight feature on them. If I had a Phoenix 3, 4, or 5, did have a Phoenix 3 actually, would I use that? Would I upgrade from that to a Phoenix 7 Pro? Yeah, maybe. Would I go to Apple Watch Ultra? No, definitely not. So there you go. Those are my seven tips and tricks for using the Phoenix 7 watch from Garmin. It does not matter which version of the Phoenix 7 you have. All these tips will work for all of them, except the smaller sizes of the original Phoenix 7 don't have that flashlight feature, but everything else applies to all of them. My name is Julian. If I can run with it, bike with it, hike with it, or film with it, I'll put videos about it here on YouTube. If that's something that interests you, please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to give a like to this video. It helps the channel immensely. As always, thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon.